Welcome back for another Waterfowl Wednesday and today I'm going to be going over everything that you need to know about scouting ducks and geese. I'm going to break this video down into two different segments. One is public land and one is private land. So we'll start with public land and I want you guys to know that the basic concepts that I'm going to go over here are going to be pretty similar to your situation but I think that my public land duck hunting here in Kansas is going to be quite a bit different from somewhere else like Arkansas or South Carolina. The first thing you're going to need to do is find a place that you can access to hunt pretty simple go on to the state website uh, state department of wildlife website check it out see if they got areas listed get a hunting atlas and just check that out it's gonna be real good and you'll get to find maybe some new areas that you didn't know were there that are gonna be close to you so the first thing you're gonna do is figure out where the birds are going you're gonna follow the birds see what pools are gonna be going to if you're in a marsh they're gonna be going to specific sp pools that they prefer more than others and so just watch the birds go out take a look see where they're flying to and that's going to be the area that you're going to want to go to if you're on a lake look at the birds see if there's spots where they're hanging out that they like the best and that's where i would say to go and some things that you need to keep in mind that there's going to be obstacles that you're going to need to cross that can make that spot inaccessible for you the first one is going to be high water if you are just walking in you don't have a boat high water is gonna be a big thing to watch out for because if water comes rolling in over your waders, you're gonna have a bad time. And I, I would not want that to happen to anybody. It's, that's gonna suck. So keep in mind that boat lanes are gonna be kind of deep sometimes. And keep in mind that there's areas next to uh, berms that you're gonna to have to go over and go, the berms go down and then they might come back up into the marsh itself that may be only way, way steep. But the, that area next to the berm or the dike or whatever, that could end up being really deep. So you gotta watch out for that. So keep that in mind, maybe find an area where you can get in where you know the water's gonna be a little shallower. Tree lines, you gotta watch out for those, uh, especially if it's flooded and you don't know what's under the water. You could trip and fall in. So be very cautious, cautious if you're crossing through tree lines. I've had to do it before and there were some sketchy times especially with camera equipment you know if you fall in and you don't have camera equipment it's kind of whatever but if you've got a $600 camera you kind of get a little bit sketchy so be careful and cross those tree lines uh, just be, be careful and like I said earlier watch out for boat lanes and just be cautious when you're walking through the water and walking in at night just be cautious make a game plan uh, in the daytime maybe walk it in the daytime and see what it's like and just kind of get a plan from there it's going to be a lot easier for you and you're going to be able to walk through safely and not have a worry about where the deep water is because that'll kill a lot of time in the mornings next thing that you need to do when you're scouting is look for areas where you're going to want to set up i like to make a game plan the day before when i'm scouting and be like okay so the birds are hitting this pool where in this pool can I sit and have the best cover to build a blind or just sit in the tall grass? Where should I go? So make that plan. Look at it and be like, okay, so this side down here, we got good cover, but we're going to have a north wind, so that's going to be coming towards us. So think it through. Really think, where's the wind coming from? Where's the best cover situation going to be? And get that plan for the next morning when you're going to go out and hunt. Duck-wise, when you're scouting, the two best times to go are early in the morning and later in the evening. Watch the birds fly and just see where they're going to go. That That's basically all you need to do. Roll up to the marsh, see where they're going, figure them out. Uh, one pool is probably going to be better than the rest of the others. And the last thing for public land scouting that I could tell you to do, and I've done it multiple times, you need to figure out a second plan. So let's say you get there, there's people at the marsh already, there's somebody in your spot, they have that same plan as you. You need to have a backup plan so you're not wandering around in the marsh early in the morning going where do we go and somebody's in your spot so have have a plan b that's very important have a plan b and also be mindful when you're walking in let's say you're in a situation uh just kind of a public land ethics thing don't set up too close to people you know keep a good 150 200 yards away if uh if it's a crowded place so there's plenty of room for everybody to hunt just don't set up 50 yards from somebody or set up right across from somebody where you're gonna be peppering people it's just basic common sense and it's an ethical thing to do so keep that in mind find areas and have a plan B, get everything in your mind, get a game plan, and just be safe in the marsh or even on a lake. If you're on a lake, same principles still apply. Uh, just be cautious and be courteous to other hunters. With private land, things are a little bit different. I'd say scouting is so much more important. 
And you know, on public land, you can set up in a marsh and kill a couple of ducks without scouting and you're gonna have a fun time. But if you go to private land and you just set up on a pond where you've never scouted and you don't even know, know if there's birds around, you could sit there all day long and not see a single duck or goose. So scouting is very important. And what you wanna do first is find the roost. Find where the birds are roosting. And so that's where the birds are gonna go at nighttime, they're gonna sleep and they all hang out. It's a nice safe place for them. Number one thing I can tell you for private land hunting is do not hunt that roost. The roost is your gold mine for the future hunts that you're going to have because that roost is probably going to stay the same throughout the season. So do not hunt the roost. You're going to screw up the birds if you do that. When I'm scouting, I like to either go in the morning or in the evening. In the evening, you're going to follow those birds from either their uh, midday loafing spot or their roost. Sometimes the birds go back to the roost in the middle of the day. Sometimes they go to a different spot. You need to figure, which out, figure out which one it is. So for the morning, let's say they're at the roost. You're gonna get there before they wake up. They wake up, you're gonna follow the birds and they're gonna tell you where they wanna go eat. Because when it's cold outside, you know, December, January time, they're gonna go to the fields and feed. You follow those birds, they're gonna go to a field and you're gonna find them. If you just stay with those birds and you follow them, you're gonna see them eventually lock up and go down on a field. And what you want to do is one, make sure you have permission on that field. And if you don't have permission on that field, try to get permission on that field. Do not hunt private land without permission. Plain and simple. Don't do that. And the worst thing that the farmers can tell you is no, I made a video in the past about talking to landowners and getting permission. So go check that out if you're wondering how to do that. But when you're looking at the birds in the field, what you want to do is figure out are they feeding hard? Is, is this like the hard feed or are they just kind of finishing up? Are they just kind of pecking away and wandering around and hanging out? If they're feeding hard, that is a very good thing. And look at the birds. See if they're scattered throughout. Are they just kind of in family groups here and there? Or are they just one big glob just hammering the corn or beans or whatever, just getting super fat and happy? What you want to do is look at them and it's the morning, so you're gonna just watch them, watch them, watch them, and then they'll eventually pick up and leave. Just keep it, keep in mind where they left off feeding there. That's very important. You wanna be able to go out the next day and set up there if they don't come back in the evening. So let's say you find a hard feed. What I like to do is um, follow them, see where they go after that. Sometimes they'll go back to the roost after feeding. Sometimes they'll go to a midday loaf. So figure out where that is. Then I would go back in the evening time and you don't necessarily have to scout in the mornings. Scouting in the mornings is good, but I think scouting in the evenings is a lot better if you want to hunt the next day. So if they have a midday loaf, sit there, wait for them to fly up. If they go back to the roost, sit there, wait till they fly up to go feed. And this will be a good time to figure out if they're feeding in the mornings or in the evenings uh, or if they're feeding in both. So keep that in mind. Follow the birds to the feed and watch them until they leave because you're going to be hunting the next day. They're going to keep feeding, keep feeding, keep feeding, and then they're going to leave off and fly away. You want to set up that next morning on that spot where those birds left off feeding. And then that's pretty much it. Set your decoy, set up in that spot. There you go. You're ready to hunt. With scouting, it gives you an idea of the number of birds that you're going to be seeing the next day or whatever. And it's going to give you an idea of you know, how to set your decoys. You want to kind of mimic the, the way the birds were sitting the day before. Uh, you can do basic uh, decoy spreads, but it's always better to try and mimic what the birds were doing the day before. It gives them a little bit of a more realistic thing to look at. My main points here are don't hunt the roost, follow the birds, see where they're feeding, make sure you get permission, that's very important. Uh, see where the birds are in the field, how they're feeding, and where do they go after the field. Because if they go somewhere after the field, like let's say it's a pond, that's going to be money too. Because the birds are going to feed and then come back to that pond the, ne the next morning as well. So what you can do is, if let's say you, you don't get the field but you have the pond, set up on that pond. The birds will be just pouring in right after that. I don't think I could, I could cover everything about scouting private land in one video. There's just so many nuances to it. But the basics are follow the birds, find where they're feeding, set up where they left off, and have at it. That's, that's going to be it. My mouth is getting tired from talking. I feel like I yapped your guys' ear off. But I hope this was a little bit of an informational video for you, teaching you guys some, some stuff that you didn't know. But uh, if you want to follow me on my social media, I've got Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and Facebook. Follow me on there and stay up to date with what's going on. But that is all I've got for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I'll catch you on the next one.